Hello everyone, my name is Logan Lynch. I am a pelvic floor physical therapist and we are gonna go through a lower body hips mobility routine today. At the time of filming this, I just did the Chad Hero workout yesterday, which is a thousand weighted step ups. You wear a ruck, I just made a backpack with 35 pounds on my back and did a thousand step ups. So my butt is pretty sore. So I'm gonna go through, I was gonna do some mobility, so I wanted you to come along with me and you can always use this in the future, in the future for a mobility routine for yourself. So we're gonna go through a few different movements that really help to open up glutes, lengthen glutes again, open up hip rotation, um, just to help those muscles relax. So if you're feeling a lot of tension through your lower body from lifting heavy, heavy workouts, um, this is great for you. So we're gonna start in one of my favorite positions, a 90-90 position. <clears throat> so what that means is we are just coming into one leg forward at about 90 degrees, back leg here at about 90 degrees. Now the closer your feet are to you, the less intense that stretch is gonna be, and the further out they are, the more intense. So you can find that sweet spot that feels good for you. So we're gonna start on this front leg. I'm gonna turn towards that front leg. My chest is kind of splitting the middle of my shin in terms of an angle. So I'm kicking my foot out, trying to get as close to that 90 degrees, and then I'm just gonna take that hinge forward. So I'm really trying to move through my pelvis to come down into that stretch. And I'm just resting my hands down and sinking into that. Now I'm trying to feel this in that back side or that front side, that front leg, but the back side through your glute. So we wanna feel some length, some stretch happening there. Again, if you don't feel it, try walking that foot out a little bit further. And as I sink into this, I'm just trying to keep the rest of my body as relaxed as possible. So I'm gonna focus on diaphragmatic breathing. So really breathing all the way around into my belly into my back and then just nice and natural letting that exhale go and we want to hold this so when we think about mobility and stretching one um like a passive stretching we want to help override those stretch receptors so we have receptors in our muscles that tell if we move too quickly to tell them to muscles contra to contract and it's what prevents injury but when we want that muscle to let go and stretch and lengthen, we need to give it time to override those receptors that are telling the muscle to contract. So that's why we want to sink into it for, you know, at least a minute or so, especially with something like this. I like to give that glute time to just sink into that length and relax. And again, I'm trying to keep the rest of my body as calm as possible so I don't develop tension. So I'm gonna come back up here. Another way I like to really work this front hip is taking my hands off and getting a little bit more active with that movement. So I'm just, think of like doing a deadlift. I'm hinging forward through my hips. Now what I don't want is I'm just rounding through my back. I want to think long and tall and I'm not using my hands. So I'm making this a little bit more of an active stretch. I'm finding length as I go down and then I'm pressing that leg into the ground to come back up. And that's gonna kind of turn those muscles on again. So I have this kind of contract, relax um, technique going on to help those muscles let go. Go one more here, but five or six on that side, good. Now I'm gonna shift my focus before we switch sides to this back leg. First, I'm just going to take my hand and kind of help guide this hip towards the mat, maybe leaning back on that opposite hand a little bit. So I want to feel this stretch kind of inside that hip. So this knee should be down on the ground or as close as you can get it. So if you're right here and it doesn't feel like you can quite get it towards the ground, just kind of push it down as far as you can without going into too much pain or discomfort. So I'm just leaning back, kind of turning towards that side to get an extra stretch through that stretch. So this side, this front hip, we are working external rotation of the hip, and this back one, I'm getting more internal rotation. And we need both for proper mobility. This internal rotation, I feel like, is often a big limiting factor, and it's not something we think about when we think of like squats and lunges. 
Um, but it's a really important movement to be able to do those movements without compensation through the rest of your body. <clears throat> so sometimes the back can take on more load or things like that if we don't have adequate hip rotation. So it's very important to have really good mobility through these two movements. So I'm going to come out of that and we're going to go one more here. Again, adding an active component. I like to have that passive and active component to it. So I'm going to place my hands on here. So now what I'm thinking about is trying to lift this foot off the ground without too much movement here. So I don't want to move my whole body just to get that foot up. I'm trying to stay pretty stable and just rotating through that thigh here, keeping that knee down and seeing if I can get some lift underneath that foot. And it's okay, don't worry about how high it goes. We're just thinking about trying to lift and working those muscles to get that range of motion. And then as we go, we'll build it and we'll get more and more as we do it. So I would aim for eight, 10 reps here on this side. And I'm gonna breathe, I'm always gonna breathe in some capacity as I'm doing these. I don't wanna hold my breath because that's gonna you know, trigger some of that sympathetic nervous system likely, and it's gonna be hard to keep everything and my nervous system relaxed. So I want to breathe as I'm stretching and doing mobility. All right, let's switch sides here and we'll run through all of these on this side together. You may have differences from one side to the other and that's okay. We all have certain patterns and um, tendencies and dominant legs and things like that. Depending on if we're playing a sport and we're using one over the other, we can develop differences side to side. So to a certain extent, some of that's normal. If we feel major differences, you know, it might be worth it to spend a little bit more time on that side to even those out just a little bit so we don't end up compensating with one side of our body over the other. So this first one, I'm just sinking into that stretch, finding length. want to feel it through that glute. Again, walking that foot out nice and far to really get into that. And then I'm focusing on my deep breathing. As you breathe in, feeling that belly relax, that back expand, those ribs expand. Exhale, I'm just keeping everything relaxed. Now here I'm already feeling a stretch in this back hip just because of that position, and I'm a little less mobile in that one. So you may feel a little bit of stretch if that bothers you at all. You can bring it a little bit closer for now. So you can focus on that movement here. And we'll bring it back up once you're there for about a minute or so. Now we're gonna to go to that active component. So I'm going to lean forward over, hinging through the hips. Again, I'm aiming my chest kind of in the middle of my calf here. Lengthen and press up. So I have that passive stretch and then I'm pushing through the ground with that leg. So it should feel like it's kind of firing up and using those muscles. One more time. All right, and we're gonna to switch to the back leg here. So first we're gonna do that just stretch back, sinking that hip down. Ooh, definitely a little bit tighter for me on this side. I'm just gonna lean and kind of stay that direction finding that sweet spot of that deep stretch, pushing into it, and then breathing. Again, we're not trying to push into pain here. If it feels super, super pinchy or uncomfortable, your face is you know, grimacing, or you feel like you're really holding a lot of tension through your body, we're not gonna get the benefit that we want. So you wanna keep the rest of your body, of your nervous system as calm as possible. So depend on that breathing and don't force what's not there yet, you know, that mobility will get better and better as you practice it, but don't force it beyond what it can do right now. All right, and then I'm gonna bring it forward. So my hands are gonna be placed on the ground. I'm pushing this leg into the mat, just keeping it connected, and then trying to lift up here. <sighs> Again, try not to feel a lot of movement through my pelvis. So I don't wanna 
dip forward every time I lift. I'm staying stable. Maybe those core muscles activating a little bit to keep me lifted here. And I'm just trying to rotate through that thigh. Think about lifting the outside of your foot up. <sighs> Keeping this front leg down and breathe. If you're getting too crampy through this muscle, which sometimes happens if we don't have that mobility, I would just work on that static stretch, that mobility and finding more of that rotation first, and then building your way up to this. So two more here. All right, and we're gonna wiggle that out a little bit. So I'm just gonna place my hands behind me and I'm just gonna rotate. Ooh, that feels good. Side to side, just kind of shake that out, rock that out. So I'm still getting that hip internal and external rotation here, but it's just a little less intense, a little, little bit lighter movement. The closer and sitting taller, the closer they are to you the more challenging it's going to be, the further away they are, it might be a little bit easier to rock them side to side. All right, and then we're going to go one more here together. So this is one of my favorites, although it is challenging for me on one side especially, um, is this deep lateral lunge. So starting, I'm going to start kind of in this wide position, kind of in like a forward fold with my feet forward. And I'm using my hands to kind of slowly walk myself to one side and I'm thinking about sinking that hip down towards that heel. Now I want to work my ankle mobility. So I'm going to keep this heel on the ground, or at least try to, and actively push this knee nice and wide and open. So my foot is planted here. I'm trying not to come up here. It's going to feel easier to come on your toes and it's harder to keep that heel down, but that's part of the challenge of mobility. So get as close as you can. If it doesn't reach, again, just actively push that heel down the best you can. But as I push this knee open, I'm getting this big inner thigh stretch. I'm opening that hip, holding there for five to 10 seconds, and then I'm gonna ease my way out and walk it to the other side. Now for me, my left side is a little bit tighter. So I'm gonna maybe not go as far, but I'm trying to open those inner thighs keep that heel down. I'm thinking butt down, chest up. And then my foot can stay like this to get more of that inner thigh. If you want a little bit more hamstring, you can lift those toes up and open it up there. You're still going to get some of that inner thigh, but it's just going to take it a little bit to more to the back of your leg as well. And other side. Each time I go, I'm just seeing if I can go a little bit deeper into that as it opens up. Now, the reason I added this one in is for that external rotation, that hip mobility, but a lot of this inner thigh opening as well. And even though, like for my workout doing step ups yesterday, or even if you're doing heavy squats or lunges, a lot of times those inner thighs get forgotten about in terms of how much they're working during those movements. Your inner thigh muscles are big stabilizers of your pelvis. So they're always working to some capacity to help stabilize you as you're doing movements that work other muscles like your glutes or your quads. So when we think of squats working our lower body, we don't necessarily think of them working our inner thighs, but they are active and on as you're doing them to help support you. So with that, they often get forgotten to lengthen and to stretch. And I love the feeling of being open through my pelvis, open through my hips, and this is a more challenging mobility movement, but a good one to get all of those areas and to challenge my ankle mobility as well here. My left ankle is a little bit tighter, so I like this to help push that mobility a little bit. Again, coming back to that breath, we're going to go one more time each side as we try and hold that position. It's very easy, again, as it's challenging to try and hold, but I'm going to Breathe, 
Feel those muscles melt that tension away. And one more time to that opposite side. We're going to even it out here. Open, open, open. Drop down. Lift that chest. I'm using this elbow to help keep that knee open so it's moving outside of those toes, or at least in the same direction as those toes. And back to center and bring it down. Whew. All right. So nice little mobility routine to go through. We got the hip 90-90 movements and that Cossack or that deep lateral lunge. Um, those are great ones. Those are some of my favorites to come to. I have lots more, so let me know if you want some more mobility routines. But that definitely got me feeling a little bit better, so hopefully that was helpful for you um, to open up your hips and recover from your workouts. Make sure to follow, subscribe for um, more videos, more mobility workouts. Always comment what kind of content you're looking for, and I hope to see you in the next one.